the eerie forest wafts with the current. Kelp is the largest of algae or seaweed. The forest can grow half a meter a day and reach to 80 meters high. But as they get deeper, they begin to make out the shapes of animals living in this marine jungle. The spiny armor of a spider crab helps keep predators at bay. A pollock uses the kelp for shelter. Brittle stars, large cousins of starfish, clamber high to ensnare tiny prey as it drifts past. Between their five legs are five jaws, ready to devour almost anything they can catch. Their distant relatives, the sea urchins, are here to eat the kelp itself. Urchin is the old English word for hedgehog, which is what they look like. They don't have eyes, but feel their way around with tiny, sticky legs. Too prickly for most predators, they can destroy whole forests of algae. Luckily, there are a few hunters with the guts to take them on such as the mean-looking two-meter wolf eel. The seafloor is a paradise for invertebrates, especially crabs. They seem to be everywhere. Including this edible crab, much sought after for the table. As the sunlight fades, spotlights are needed. A pale, ghost-like shape glimmers in the gloom, a chimera. Chimera means made from parts of different animals. This primitive fish is the missing link between sharks and rays. Evolving around 340 million years ago, when the two species split, it's mostly shark, but still glides on large ray-like fins. They are the oldest group of fish, widespread in ancient seas, but now mostly confined to the deep. They are a rare sight in such shallow water. Even in the dark abyss, it can find food and navigate with its sensitive nose. Despite the dark, the seabed has some remarkably colorful inhabitants, sea anemones, distant relatives of coral. Not delicate flowers, but predatory animals. The wafting tentacles are waiting for contact with a passing fish or crab. When the victim brushes past, the head of the tentacle explodes, harpooning the prey and pumping it full of neurotoxin. Beautiful, but deadly. The wreck of a boat. But around its course, there are signs of life. It's providing much needed shelter on the seabed for wildlife. Sea squirts cling to the sides their gaping tube-like bodies filtering water to extract plankton from the currents. 
and tube worms extend their delicate fans to sift through the passing debris. They are all creatures that would normally seek a coral reef, but the wreckage creates similar opportunities. There are lots of sponges, but no coral. Time to move on. The chimera seems to dance in front of the divers, perhaps picking off plankton attracted by their lights. Finally, some coral. This is a tiny reef, just 30 meters long, but very productive. It may not be long, but it's tall, its skeletal mass towering above the sea floor. Here are sponges and other familiar creatures. Basking stars are huge relatives of starfish that can be 70 centimeters across. Their wriggling, medusa-like tentacles waft, trying to catch passing debris. Colorful sea fan corals sit high on the reef. Nudibranchs farm the sea fans. The sea slugs absorb the sea fans' toxins and use it in self-defense, adding poison to their colorful tentacles. <laughs> 